You are right on time. I've always liked that about you. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday, July 12th. For those of you that come here regularly, I've got some news to keep you entertained right there. This is news I have grabbed up over the last couple of days. It's all hand-picked, not a news feed. The oldest news is at the top. The newest news is at the bottom. For the rest of you, what I like to do here is discuss penny stocks and OTC stocks that, well, that catch my attention through the day, and then I share them with you on this show. Now, we just don't look at stocks on the OTC market. We are looking at penny stocks as well, and that's any stock under $5, regardless what market it's on. So we could easily be looking at New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ stocks too, which is okay because they're free to trade. Most companies are still charging us to trade OTC stocks. Now, I do most of my research on OTC stocks right here on the otcmarkets.com website. You can't see the heading up here because the news is blocking it, but that's where we are at. And the reason I use this site is because it is the only site I found that is updated regularly by FINRA and the SEC. How regularly? Every day. So if you're doing searches for your information, you're wasting a lot of time and energy. Just come on over here to the otcmarkets.com website. Get it right the first time. Save yourself a lot of hassle and time. Now let's take a look at how our market fared today. It was a very unique day, folks. This was an interesting day. There was a lot of shares. Look here. We got 19.2 billion shares we did today. That is a ton. And that is a record breaker now. We had 15.2, I think, two weeks ago. And this is well over a year ago that we've been here. So this is fantastic to see. We only did $1.7 billion worth, though. Our average is 2.1. And our trades are down as well. So when you kind of look at the numbers and figure out what's going on, you can tell that it was the cheaper stocks being sold today. And when I say cheaper, I mean virtually the cheapest. They were selling like hotcakes the trips. Triple zero stocks were on fire. We are right here at the current markets page of the OTC market. And I have highlighted the big trades and the big volume movers. Now, not all of them are triples. This one I didn't highlight, but that's a triple right there. FTEG, triple zero one, 17 million, 11 trades. Look at that one, 5 billion shares. Now remember, we did 19 billion today. So there's 5 billion right there. That takes it down to 14 billion. 632 trades with 200% gains, triple zero three. That was ticker VGLS. Another one is B now, triple zero five, as well as ITVI was a triple zero five. Both did 66%, 57 million, and forty-five trades. These are the big numbers on the board, as you can see here. 1.6 billion, 233 trades, 50% gains, phone new. DSCR, triple zero one five, 50% gains, half a million. 37 trades. So there are a lot of stocks that are over triple zero selling, but not with big numbers, not with huge volume. Uh, there's another one, triple zero nine with 25. This one looks, no, that's a penny. Okay, that's a penny. This one, GSFI, triple zero four, 165 million. There is our warrant for the new bankruptcy I pointed out the other day. Uh, double zero nine. Oh, okay. That's not a trip. I thought it was. In either case, you get my drift here. There are a lot of triple zero stocks selling a ton of shares. And right here, 1.6 billion. And what was that other one? Five. So you're looking at six and a half billion, something like that c coming off of that just for two stocks. So that brings it down to 13 billion. So you can see where most of the activity was. But I want to show you where the rest of the activity was and really how light it was. There was not a lot of huge gainers today. Not really. So we're taking a look at a scan using my Thinkorswim trading platform. This is free. Just going over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for a free trading account, keep your account open, and ta-da, you got yourself a free trading platform to use anytime you want. So this is a scan. This is one page of the two pages scan they have. And I've done a search here for all the stocks above triple zero nine. Now we just seen all that activity over there on the OTC market, hot. So I'm looking at double zero one up to $3. 
Now, up to $5 is a penny stock, but I got to keep my search tight here because TOS, Think or Swim, their search facility will only go 2,000 stocks deep, and they do it alphabetically from the letter A down or the letter Z up. And if it's too far spread, you can't see P-N-O-M. They just don't come up. So I try to keep it tight, and we're probably missing a swath right now. But the whole point of this is to see how the market was faring today. And even though there was a lot of shares on the OTC market, and you know there's always a lot of shares on the major market, we didn't have a lot of big gainers. This is just, you know, there's lots and lots and lots of stocks here. And that is the first page, and we are going from 300% down to 24%, just like that. The top, we got about a half a dozen here, over 100%, but none of them have a million shares, not even close. We got one at three quarter million, almost, and we're actually going to take a look at this one SMKG, Smart Card Market. That is one of the stocks we're looking at. But you can see the volume is low. Where is the first million? Right there. There's the first million, THWWW. Hey, we talked about that the other day. Uh, TH uh, increased their revenue projections, and the stock is now worth more, so the warrants are worth more, and it is jumping. So this is the same thing if we look at the other side. I told you they split their search. You can see on the other side of the spectrum, the same thing. One, two, three. You got three over 100% out of all the stocks on all the markets that are under $3. And again, one page we are at 20%. We're already down to 20%, and I can tell you that is abnormal. It was the cheap, cheap stocks today that were getting attention on the OTC market. Now, in saying that, I've got a chart up here for CZNI. It's a triple. Well, Barely, it opened up at triple zero nine, and I think it actually hit double zero one pre market. It had already hit that, and as soon as the market opened, it fell. Now, we do expect CZ and I to move. This is a reverse merger with Baumo, which is an artificial intelligent recruitment center that helps businesses find employees. It fell today, everybody expected it to run. I still think it's going to run. So why did it fall today? Well, as I said, it was the cheap stocks. Did you notice we were looking at 0002, 0005, 0003? We weren't seeing a lot of 0007, 8s, or 9s, which is where this has been sitting all day. So it was almost outside of the buying realm. So we didn't get as much activity on this. However, there is the beginning of the surge three, four days ago. There is the end of the surge. There's our middle line, exactly, and she is bouncing. She has kept 50% of her gains, as I always say, and she is bouncing off the top here, and I'm confident. She didn't come below it. She's sitting right on it, and chances are she's going to get ready to launch. All right, let's go take a look at that first stock I have for you. It was difficult finding stocks to share with you today because of the weird action. I don't like to share triple zero stocks because they don't move fast normally tough to predict that. So we've been looking at other stocks today and all of these do have catalysts. I am interested in these and I think you should be too. Without a doubt, this is a very interesting stock I'm going to show you. Now there's probably more lessons involved showing you this stock than anything else. This is ticker SMED, Sharps Compliance Core. Now they had news come out today. It was big news. It's why this stock jumped. But there was even bigger news down at the bottom. And this is a cautionary warning. You do want to read an entire news press. You never know what they dropped in there. So I did find this and I'm going to share this with you. Now she's at $8.44 right now. Not a penny stock by any means. However, she was a penny stock this morning before she had her 200% gain. Though we are not looking at this to get into it. Matter of fact, you're not going to be able to. You'll understand why after I show you in a minute. So what does the company do? Well, they are into waste management for hazardous materials. Primarily, they work with the medical and pharmaceutical industries. That's their business. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Not bad, about 25 times increase. Went from a quarter million to just over 5 million. Share structure. Wow, it's a low float. Now, I don't know what it is. Uh, I normally go to the unrestricted shares, and they'll tell me here, but I know it's a low float because the outstanding is only $19.5 That is low. So whatever it is, it's low. 
But I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't matter. The point is moot once you see the news. Financials, I bet they are making some money. Yeah, they're making good money. Remember, we got to take three zeros and put those behind here. So this is yearly, 40 million, 44 million, 51, 76 million. How are they doing quarterly? They're tearing it up, about 18 million for the last two quarters each three-month period. They do put out a lot of money, but they are still making millions of dollars a month. Disclosures, uh, they might have something over here. No, those are weeks old. All right, so what we have is the news. Now, it really doesn't matter about all the other news. It's not even going to come up. It's a good thing I saved this page. I've got it right here. <laughs> See, they did have it earlier. I don't know where it went. But this news came out today. Sharp's compliance to be acquired by an affiliate, Aurora Capital Partners. Sharp's Compliance Core, a leading full-service national provider of comprehensive waste management solutions, including medical, pharmaceutical, and hazardous waste, today announced that it has entered into a definitive merger agreement to be acquired by an affiliate of Aurora Capital Partners, a leading middle market private equity firm. So you got a big merger here. Under the terms of the merger agreement, Aurora will commence an all-cash tender offer to acquire all of the issued outstanding shares of Sharp for $8.75. Our price is $8.44. You want to, and it really doesn't matter where it was, that's the reason it jumped, because they told everybody what the shares were going for which represents a premium of approximately 207% over Sharp's closing share price on July 11th. The transaction has been unanimously approved by the board of directors. Following the successful completion of the tender offer, Aurora will acquire all remaining shares not tendered in the tender offer through a second step merger at the same price. So this all sounds great, doesn't it? This is a big deal. They've paid more than double the regular price, 200% more than the normal share price. So somebody's very interested in getting this company, but it doesn't matter to me and you. No, look what's at the very bottom down here. The transaction is not subject to any financing contingency and is expected to close in the third calendar quarter of 2022, which is just coming up. Upon the completion of the transaction, Sharps will become a privately held company and shares of Sharps common stock will no longer be listed on any public market. That's it, folks. This merger means absolutely nothing. It doesn't matter why the price went up. It doesn't matter it's a merger. It doesn't matter who bought them because they're leaving the market. They're going private. If you're invested in this, well, you better sell now at this nice high price, which is probably why they did it. You know, it's one of the things that makes it easy to get the shares back in because as soon as people start selling their shares, they'll start pulling them off the market until they're all gone. So SMED is going to be disappearing. You want to take a look at the chart and see the bounce because it happened all at once. Let me show you. Well, we only need to take a brief look at ticker SMED. You can see what happened today. It was a monumental jump all the way down here at about $2.86 and it went to $8.38. Wow, look at that. Right back up over to here unbelievable I mean that would be a great bounce if they were gonna stay on the market but they're not and just so you can see how abrupt this did happen flat as a pancake had a huge jump one bar in five minutes let's come down to the one minute just out of curiosity so one bar went from two dollars and eighty four cents up to eight dollars and thirty eight cents one bar Boom, in one minute, and pretty much she stayed up there. A little bit of rolling, but I mean, she is totally flat now. I guess word is out that there's no reason to trade this stock. You might as well sell it for the profit, get out, move on. So if you're in it, sell it, get out, move on. If you're not, don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. 
This stock here had some big news today, but it wasn't really catalytic. Actually, it kind of built on news that they had come out last month, which really was big news. Now, it's not that the news is dead. It's actually news that is going to be building months and months and months in the future. So there's a lot going on right now, and I think the news today just re-highlighted all of that. So this is ticker SMKG, Smart Card Marketing Systems. I laugh because today when I was looking this up, it was funny how many companies on the OTC market with the word smart in their name were running today. I don't know if there was any affiliation or just plain confusion, but a lot of smart companies were running. So SMKG finished today at 0.045, four and a half cents with over 118% gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC where you have to have your financials audited. That makes them more trustworthy, more transparent. They've got the verified profile and transfer agent I'm always telling you to look for, more validated information, and they have independent directors. You need those whenever you uplist. So they may have used them to uplist to the QB. If they plan on going any higher, they're going to need them then as well. Now we do have a description down here. They are a smart card fintech paytech company, but it's kind of tough to explain. So let's first take a look over here at Twitter. Twitter gives us a few details about the company, just kind of puts a parameter around it. They tell us here that they are unique. They have an immeasurable book value today because they have 22 proprietary digital assets that service the most robust growth industries fintech, paytech, cross-border, and blockchain globally. And this is a list of all these companies that they're working with right now. Now, they are working in the United States. They're working in Libya. They're in Africa. They're in a lot of big markets, and they are expanding huge right now. Let's see if there was another piece of information down here uh, about us. We are fintech, paytech, blockchain, NFT, crypto and digital, strategies and commerce cloud and mobility so and the news will give us more insight so that's the sort of stuff that they are up to now what was the relative volume around the company's news today oh i hate that brown thing coming down whoa that's a pretty good jump now they're not huge numbers i'll give you that we're going from 20,000 shares a day e gads we're not going to notice that on the charts to uh 769,000. It's not a big jump. We haven't even hit a million yet. But if you figure that out, that's something like uh, 35 times her normal volume. So it is a jump in volume. Share structure. What do we got for a float here? Yeah, it's not a great float, but it's not horrible. We got 145 million in the float. Financials for this company. They are making some money. Put three zeros behind there. That's a half a million dollars. But look at this, folks. They get to keep all that money. Doesn't cost them anything because what they've got is digital technology. Once you make a song and you upload it, how much does it cost to sell that song off of your drive? Nothing. You just keep downloading it for free. That's free money. And that's what they got here. They own technology. So it's just free, clear money. What are their last quarterly reports? Uh, March, they did 127,000. They did put out 4,000 for something. Maybe some new furniture. I'm just kidding. I don't know. All right. What about their disclosures? We got anything there? Uh, not since 2021. So let's take a look at that news. So they've got lots of news here about their card and what, what it's going through. And I don't want to go through all that, but I do want to look at the piece of news from last month and touch on to the news that came out today. So on June 6th, this news came out, Smart Card Marketing Systems is pleased to announce entering a joint venture partnership with ACES Group, DBA, Canacash, Africa. Now, this is some pretty informative information here, and I'll expound on why it's really big. Uh, June 6th, you can see right there is when it came out. The company today announced a JV joint venture partnership with Canacash, a digital fintech organization based in Africa just the kind of people this company helps. The partnership aims at providing Canacash our proprietary intellectual property portfolio, 
their technology, offering to enable a marketplace linked with digital wallet for the merchant and customers based in Africa, offering them a unique solutions in digital payments. More than 2 million sub-Saharan African immigrants living in the U.S. transfer money to families regularly in Africa. Canacash will start sending remittances from the U.S. to 11 African markets. Remittance inflows to sub-Saharan Africa soared 14% to $49 billion in 2021. Wow, can you imagine $49 billion was sent? I just have a hard time imagining that much money being sent from America to Africa. The business opportunity for a cutting-edge platform coupled with deep knowledge of the African diaspora and the local markets position Canna Cash to capture market share complete and scale quickly. About 60% of the African population, which is around 100 million people, remain without a traditional banking account. The unbanked population has a high penetration of smartphone, posing a unique opportunity for fintech companies like Canacash. Here's the whole point. It's, it's like PayPal. PayPal isn't a bank, but you can keep your money in PayPal. You could have an Amazon account. You know, you're a seller there. You can keep your money in there. You can keep your money in e-wallets. There's a lot of places to put money now, and it doesn't have to be a bank. So all these unbanked, people that don't have banking accounts, can't get banking accounts, whatever. They can keep money in this sort of situation, pay for everything, uh, send money to other countries, have it all traded through FX. You know, the currency is traded over everything that they've got going on. So Africa is a huge market for this sort of product where all you need is a card and that's really your bank because it's all digital. So this is what the big news was a month ago. Now the news that came out today pretty much is just talking about that. Smart Card Marketing Systems Inc. African FinTech has potential to attract investors, says FinTech NGR. Now, there's not really a lot to be said here, but you have this group over there in Africa, the FinTech Association of Nigeria, stating that this program looks like it should have a lot of appeal to investors. So just saying that today got this stock running. So let's go see what the chart looks like and if it's going to continue to run and where it might go. Looking at SMKG, six-month, four-hour chart. High back here, 13 cents. Low, maybe a week ago, of two cents. About a 650% drop there. She was above the 200 for a couple months, then laid on the 200 for quite a few months until just recently here, she had this down spiral and hit this low bubble where it looks like she's been bouncing off for a while here before she took off. Now, it looks like the volume's real strong, but remember, this was only doing 20,000 shares a day. Today, she did three-quarter million. So even though it looks like a lot, it's just in perspective, that's all. All of our technicals are pushing up right now, our MACD, our RSI, our percentage price oscillator, a new one I'm using, and the ADX, which shows me trend strength. Everything is going up, and any of those are pointing up, it's always good. So it looks dynamite on the four-hour. On the 20 day one hour, well, there's our drop to the low bubble, and it looks like she did repeatedly hit that low bubble. And then very soon, when the bell went off, she jumped. What is that? 300% plus, maybe 350%. Technicals were real strong on the hour, too. Let's take a look at that five day, five minute. All right, that's one bar again. I'm actually going to look at this on the one minute. All right, so let's see here. We have one, two, three, four, five. So the first five minutes, you really didn't have anything going on. It didn't look like a whole lot was happening. Then our volume started coming in. And in two minutes, she did cover that 300%. In two minutes. Boy, isn't that lovely? And after that, she started falling, folks. Falling faster than she even climbed. And she is way down below her 50% mark. There's her ceiling. There's her basement. 
she's very close to the basement and all of the technicals have gone flat so it doesn't really look like she has any continuation right now but the stock the company themselves they do have a huge market that they can tap into but I don't know how long down the road that's gonna be I don't know when the next press release is gonna come so I really don't see any catalyst for this right now this is well chalk it up to most of the stocks were triple zeros today that had all the action <laughs> but you saw on the scan we looked at, this was at the top, right? It had almost a million shares. That's how tough it was finding decent stocks to show you. But SMKG is a legitimate company making legitimate money, doing legitimate business, and they are going to grow. There's no doubt about that. Hey, did you notice while we've been sitting here chatting with each other that our OTC market is now up to 20 billion share volume? Sure is. She is churning and burning still after market hours. You do realize we haven't hit 20 billion in ooh, 14 months, maybe. It has been a long time since we've even come close to that. God, this makes me feel good. Happy days are here again. Come on, you feel the same way. You do realize that before everything went to pot, we were doing 50 to 60 billion shares a day. That is about one third the way there. We were down to five billion shares just a couple weeks ago and have been hanging around that for a long time. So this is exciting. All right, I'm breaking a rule here. We're gonna look at a triple zero stock. And the reason I'm doing this, for two reasons. I did have a stock I was gonna show you. Had news today, had catalyst, took off, hit 50%, and then fell back to three. Not real exciting. It was okay, but psh, what I decided to do was look at the stock that sold the absolute most shares on the OTC market today. That one that did five billion. This is it. VGLS, VG Life Sciences. I figure if they did five billion shares, there has to be a reason. And I wanna know what that reason is. So I came over here scouting around looking and I think I found the reason. Now I'm not sure if it's it for sure, for sure. And I'm not sure it's exactly what everybody thinks it is if they see the same thing, but I'm gonna share it with you. So they did finish the day at triple zero three with 200% gains. Now that's great, 200% is 200%, but don't get too excited about it. All they did was jump from triple zero one, which is the absolute cheapest price you can buy a stock for on the open market, up to triple zero three. If it had gone to triple zero four, we'd had 300% gains. If it made it to triple zero five, we'd had 400% gains. This is the same tactic I tell you to use when you buy a stock at double zero one, because every digit is another 100% gain. Now she is pink limited information. That means they're late filing. And you can't be late forever. You're late too long, they'll yank you off the open market and throw you onto the expert market. It's not a delisting, it's a penalty box, a timeout. Gives them time to get their filings caught up. Once they do, they're back on the market. Now this company is in jeopardy of that. Now you'll know when it's gonna happen because the OTC market has what they call grace period. It's yellow, it'll be right in here somewhere. It says grace period. That gives them 15 days to get their filings caught up or they will be off the market until they get them caught up. But they do have a verified profile. They've got a transfer agent verified. That's all good, but they're a shell risk. Now that's kind of understandable because they tell us right here in the description, VG Life Sciences Inc. is a holding company restructuring its business to focus on real estate investments and acquisitions. So they've obviously got things going on right now. But none of that is the catalyst that we're looking at, at least not that I believe it is. So you know how many shares they sold today? What do they normally do? They normally do about 54, 55 million. Today they did 5.1 billion. I do believe that's something like 90 times her normal volume. It's a huge jump. Speaking of huge, that is a huge number on the float. 8.3 billion, gigantic. Financials are gonna be zero because it's a shell risk. That means they're not reporting any income. And their disclosures is what it's all about. They're late on their filing, and it looks like they're all caught up. Kind of. See, what we've got here is yesterday they put in the attorney letter. The attorney letter is the cap piece. When you put in all your filings and then the annual comes in, you have to have an attorney letter with the annual. You do not need an attorney letter with quarterlies. So they put in this attorney letter yesterday, the very last piece to the puzzle. But 
where's the annual? I see an annual all the way back here in March, and here's the attorney letter. Now, unless the attorney letter was rejected and they had to redo it, which normally they say something amended or something like that. But in either case, this is what I think people see. The last piece of the puzzle is sitting there right now, done yesterday, which means pink limited will turn into pink. No more danger zone, Will Robinson. And people love that. They love their stock to be out of the danger zone. So we could see a huge jump off of that just because of that. Now, what do I mean by huge? Well, I don't know. Let's go take a look at the chart and find out. That is our six-month, four-hour chart for VGLS. We got a high absolutely against the wall here of 0032 and a low there of zero. Zero, that's what it says. And right now we're at double zero three, so there is over a thousand percent gain right there. And you can see she's been flat here for a long time. She had a strong down surge here. You might get yourself some very tight supports in here. We we can see she had a real strong support up in that area. Looks like we had one right there, one right there, and one right there. I'm looking at here where they're all hitting over and over again, that's where I find my supports, where the price likes to sit for long periods of time. Or actually, the truth of the matter is, it's where the price changes direction. It comes up, stops, goes back down. Comes down, stops, goes back up. That's your support and resistance line. So there we go, roughly just throwing them in there. You can see she doesn't have a whole lot of volume, very sporadic. Today's volume was incredible. Lots of bounces like a picket fence. That's what you get with triple zeros. And then today, she came out from underneath, way down at the bottom, and has put herself above the 200 and is hitting one of those supports that I just drew there. Technicals, all of them are pointing up right now. 20-day, one-hour view. Well, you're not going to see anything but that picket fence and the jump. Now, because of the bar I use, the Hike and Ashi, we get a little bit more information in our bars. This isn't your sta standard candle chart. This is a Hike and Ashi. So I can see where the levels of growth are instead of just a top or a bottom or a middle. It actually shows me different levels of growth. So I can see this is actually growing between the one and the two. It's actually going up. And then, once it got up here to the top, it took a jump and went all the way to three. It didn't even go in between. Now, I expect it to maybe bounce in here. That's what triples do. They get stuck between one digit and the next for a long time. But if everybody thinks this is going to go pink, and it does go pink, if this goes pink, look at it, make sure, because they're not going to tell you. You're just going to have to go and look. And if it says pink, this thing is probably going to run. And what's it going to run to? Well, right there, we've got triple zero three at that support, triple zero five, triple zero seven, and triple zero nine. Oh, and it keeps going up there to double zero one two. So, depending how strong your technicals are, pushing up, showing strength, ride this as long as she wants to go. And as soon as you see these start to roll over, as soon as they start to go down, I mean, don't wait for them to go down. Don't get greedy, folks. Take the big surge that comes. Get out and be happy. Even if there's more to be gotten, don't worry about that. You're not going to lose anything not taking it, I promise. So VGLS could be a good pop play. Now, I've got a few stocks that I didn't show you, but that have situations you should be aware of. Real quick, real brief, show and tell. Let me show you what I got. Now, these stocks I'm showing you are more about a heads up than anything else. They don't have any strong news or catalyst to propel the charts. However, they do have some very strange circumstances you may want to consider and maybe take advantage of. First one we're looking at here is Electric Last Mile Solutions. This is a stock that fell off the NASDAQ down to the OTC because they went into bankruptcy. Their ticker, ELMWQ. The W stands for warrant and the Q stands for bankruptcy. So this is the warrant we are looking at. And I'm looking at the warrant because it is set up to give away some good gains. This is a perfect price. She finished the day at 0 0.0165. She started the day at a penny. So that 6.5 behind the penny, just a little over a half a cent, gave it 65% gains. So this could easily give away some more strong gains. However, 
If you're going to play this stock, you better play it in the next few days. I'm serious about that. See here, they are pink limited information, meaning they're late on filing. But I just got done telling you, when you get the countdown, the words grace period show up. They're in the countdown of the last 15 days. And we can find that over here under the quote tab, proprietary quote eligibility. There's your grace period. And they tell us the last day of the grace period for the company is 7 2022 So they have eight days to get their filings in or they're going to be pulled off the market. So if you're planning on playing the stock, make it a day trade. Next one we're looking at, Gen Tech Holdings, G-T-E-H. Now the stock finished today at triple zero one, the absolute lowest price. It is the floor and they had no activity today. They are pink current and they've got all their green ticks, so it looks solid in that regard. But I found a filing here that just came out the other day. Gentech on June 24th approved a reverse split of one in 500 to be enacted on July 17th. That's five days from now, folks. So if you've got a thousand shares on July 17th, you'll wake up to two shares. But hey, don't feel too bad. They're gonna kick that price up 500 times. So your triple zero one stock right now will be a nickel then. So watch out for the reverse split that is coming in five more days. Last one we're taking a look at here is the ABQQ, AB International Group. Finished today at 0 0.0103. Another great price to get into this if it moves, and it's possible it could. This is on the middle tier. They've got audited financials. They've got their green tick, so they're in great shape. And their news, they canceled their reverse split. I don't know what it was, and it really doesn't matter. It could have just been a one to two. They are canceling it, and that is always good news. Nobody wants a reverse split. So whatever it was, People are happy. It did go up today. 32% is how it finished. I can't recall how high it actually got, if it got any higher. And I don't know if it's going to run tomorrow. But that is a perfect buy-in price, and that is perfect news. So you may want to keep your eye on ABQQ tomorrow. I can't tell if I like days like this or not. I mean, I'm happy to see the volume going up on the OTC market. That is great. But triple zero stocks, I do have some, but I didn't buy them at the triple zeros. I bought them at much higher prices, so I am way, way down. So the only thing I can really do is average down. And I don't want to average down while it's just sitting down there. Now, if I see it start to run, like CZNI. CZNI I've had for a while and it looked like it's about ready to run. So I went and bought some more the other day, averaged down just a wee bit because it was real, real close to my price already. But that's the only time I'm really running around with my triple zeros. Only when I see a strong catalyst that looks like it's going to force it up. So we have a few stocks there that did have catalysts today. They may have a chance of running, but folks, it's about watching the numbers, seeing what stocks have the most trades, which stocks are selling the most shares. That tells us which stocks the people are putting their money in and where the price action is going to be. So whether it be a triple zero stock or a penny stock or even a couple bucks, if there's a lot of people, there's probably a very good likelihood you're going to make some money. Remember, the more you know, <laughs> the more you're going to grow. See ya.